Okay, uh, as we're moving along on motorcycle project, uh, today I uh, am unboxing what was given to me as a Christmas gift, uh, partly to work on the, the motorcycle, the little small welding job I have to do to put the, the stop for the triple tree in place. Um, and so, uh, so this was given to me uh, to use for that and other little projects that I may want to do. This is an inexpensive kind of bottom of the line in price uh, welder. This is a 90 amp flux wire welder that I bought from Harbor Freight or my wife got for me for Christmas from Harbor Freight. And I think this should be fine for what I want to do. I don't plan to do a lot of heavy or uh, complicated welding as long as this thing will strike an arc and feed welding wire and uh, will penetrate the metal then I think we'll be okay. So uh, I'm gonna put the pull this thing out and look at it and see what's in here, set it up and uh, try it here this morning and we'll see how it goes. So on the unboxing, moving right along, uh, there is a manual. Have not looked at the manual yet. Looks like it's got a quick start guide uh, on how to set up the spool and all of that. So I'm sure that will probably be handy. Uh, there is a styrofoam insert with several things in there. Uh, looks like a handle. Looks like some other kind of handle. Not sure exactly what that's for. Um, a box. Don't know exactly what that is either. It's a little bit heavy. I guess if I look at the manual, I'll find out, but uh, let's take a look. We'll see what that is. Okay, so that's a spool of wire. So it looks like I've got a pound of uh, flux cord wire. Uh, it's the 0 .030 inch diameter or 0.8 millimeter. And this is the wire that comes with this. I read some folks that uh, have been critical of uh, the Harbor Freight wire and saying that, uh, that it's not good, I don't know. Uh, my guess is it's probably fine. But I did go ahead yesterday and bought some Lincoln Electric wire. Uh, okay, so this looks like the, yeah, this, so this is the dark piece. So there's a, supposed to be a face shield in here, so I think this is what goes in there. Yeah. Yes? Hi. Where are you going? Okay, you just made the video. <laughs> Wait till YouTube sees you. And now, uh, so moving right along here. So, so yeah, removing this, looking at different parts. Looks like there may be some tips and screws and things here. Uh, uh, I think this is supposed to be a brush with a. Uh, oh, so this is, uh, oh, okay, so this is the chipper, and uh, this uh, actually is a, has a metal tip, so that should work fine to do some chipping. You know, it's got a metal tip in this plastic thing, and then a little bit of a metal brush, brush isn't much force, not too many bristles, but I'm sure it will be an interesting starting point. Uh, I've already bought another one, a little more heavy duty one, uh, to use for that. Back like I remember way back when I was in uh, high school and I had to do some welding in ag class. And uh, so this is going to be interesting for me to do a little welding. I haven't touched a welder in 30 years, 35 years. Uh, I am uh, 52 years old and probably the last time I used a welder was probably 17 or 18. So it's been a while. Uh, I grew up on a farm down in uh, western Kentucky and uh, went on to become an engineer and went on engineering school and have been kind of in the corporate world and engineering world uh, ever since and as I've gotten a little older my kids have gotten grown up I've gotten a lot more interested in doing project work and working on my cars again I haven't really hadn't done automotive work in probably 20 30 years and I've started uh, doing rebuilds and, and, uh, and things like this motorcycle project so uh, it's just kind of fun uh, to do as I've got a little bit of spare time here and there. Not a lot, but a little bit. And uh, so in my spare time, I do a few projects. So let's see if we can get this thing out. And uh, we'll figure out how uh, can hold us something that. Hopefully it's not a bad thing to lift on. Get a little better grip. 
So there's the welder itself. And a tip. And then down inside here is what uh, my understanding is the face mask. And my guess is this little short handle probably goes right in. So I assume that's the front. My guess is this piece of cardboard is not needed. Put that over here with the other things. And Interesting. Don't know that I have ever seen a full wrap of plastic around a power cord before. I have no idea why you would need that. Quite honestly, from an engineer standpoint, a product standpoint, that looks like a waste of money to me. And on products that I would be responsible for, which I am, I would never spend money on that. That looks like a waste of waste of good money. But they did it. So there's our ground strap. Now here's our electrode. And interesting. So I have never used I've never used a uh, wire fed welder before. All the welding I did growing up was all stick weld. There's a little button right here apparently that you push to uh, Release this so it will open. Yep. Let me see the inside. If the welding spool goes here, there's a little diagram that shows that. A couple of little feed rollers, that uh, little tension grip rollers that run that through. So it'll run, put a spool of wire here, feeds through the tube, a couple of powered rollers here that power the wire through the cable and out through the tip for the welding. So pretty simple. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put this thing together, and uh, I think it should be ready to go. I don't think there's much to it. So this handle goes on like so, by lining up the slot at the back, pushing forward until it goes in. Then, should be a screw. Bad boy. Not so bad boy. There we go. Right, screws in place, flat washer, lock washer, this. and now, as I recall, plastic handle goes on the inside, just push that through and it snaps, I have it. some sense. What needs to happen with this wire? This comes off. This comes off. This comes off. Spool goes on. And this gives some tension. Curve that section off. Start feeding through. This is two. Now, before I get very far, this knob here, there's a knob that will let this rotate up and lets me rotate that wheel out. And now I can thread the wire through and uh, into the opening for the wire is kind of caught nicely between these rollers and uh, that should allow it to feed well out to this tip. So what happens to recap is this flux core wire will, will when you hit the trigger right here, when you hit this trigger, these rollers inside the machine here, if you can see that well, I'll tilt it up just in case not. But there's rollers that the wire is coming off the spool through these uh, nip rollers. There's a tensioner here. This is what I adjusted to tighten up and to feed the wire through. You undo this, you loosen this and flip it up, swing this roller out of the way to get the wire threaded, then you close it back. In fact, I'll just show you that again. Just so, in case it wasn't easy to see, you rotate that up and you open this to get the wire threaded in. You close, 
close this back over and tighten it down. And that's what gives tension to the system, and then the, there's, that creates a nip that will feed the wire. Okay. So I think we're at a point I should be able to plug this thing in. And see a little action here. So let's turn it on. Alright, I hear it coming up. Let's feed the wire. Turn that all up. And we'll wait for it. Feel it. Feel something. I still see it moving. It's feeding. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Feel some vibration coming through my hand. There it is. Okay. So there we have our wire. So I'm going to snip this a quarter inch. And I believe this should be. All I have to do to start being able to weld once this is turned back on. Okay, well I'm back. I've been uh, playing around with this a little bit, practicing a little bit, and I'm not an expert welder, but uh, my skills are coming back a little bit. I was always fair at it when I was young, and it was adequate. I could get a job done. And so just playing around on this old piece of uh, steel that I have here, I'm learning how this thing works, learning how to attack it with a MIG, and uh, so I'm going to give this a whirl. I probably, probably for safety's sake, ought to have on gloves, which I do have a pair, so it's no big deal to use them. I'm, a, as I said, I'm a farm boy by, by early training, and we tended to cut corners, and not always be the safest about things. So. So let's give it a whirl, see if we can do this safely with gloves on, and uh, here we go. So uh, all I really have to do is point and wait for that arc to start. Whoop, let's try again. Didn't go exactly as planned. Here's a pretty sloppy attempt at a fillet weld. That honestly doesn't look like my best work, but let's we'll see what we ended up with. Let's hit it again and see what happens. That's really ugly. But it is welded and it is practice. So, okay, let's try going around this thing. 